so i would say welcome back to the, the channel but that kind of feels like i'm not quite ready to to make to use that sort of phrase yet but i have been contacted um this is going to be another apple carplay video um i've been uh, contacted by a company called orex which um i have to say i hadn't heard of them but the unit that they have kindly kindly sent to me for review is this the orex x5 five inch um you know, apple carplay slash android auto unit so they have asked me to do a review on this um so i thought why not in terms of specs of the unit i suspect it's very similar to the carpuride w502 um but let's just have a quick look at those specs here um so all of the usual five inch uh, HD IPS capacitive screen uh, it has a micro SD card slot Bluetooth USB IP67 rated uh, for waterproofing although I need to check that with them as it mentions on one of the thumbnails here it says uh, I believe it says IPX7 yeah IPX7 so I need to clarify that um, that might just be uh, a bit of a typo on the website. Uh, so let's have a quick look down. All familiar sort of, you know, specifications. Uh, it is obviously uh, a wireless, uh, a wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto unit for a motorcycle with the ability to pair both your phone and also your headset. We're going to try all, all of that out. Screen resolution is 800 by 480, 65,000 colors and 1,000 nits brightness, which I'm going to test, obviously, because that has been one of my criticisms of other CarPlay units, such as the Ottercast C5. The brightness on that really made it difficult in bright light. Um, Anti-theft design, I don't think I'm going to get to test it up to 70 degrees and down down to minus 20 but uh, hopefully we'll have some rain uh, and some decent sun to be able to test this in can be used on any any motorcycle or you know vehicle uh, that has you know handlebars included in the packaging which we will get to in a moment we have obviously the unit two different types of power cables and the mounting hardware so that takes care of that let's get to the actual um let's get to the actual unboxing all right let's have a look at what we get in the box um nothing really on the outside of the box to indicate the specifications but as we can see it is the wireless carplay and android auto unit for a motorcycle let's have a look inside if it's not or already abundantly clear i've never done an um never done an unboxing video so this probably won't be as exciting as people might be expecting but we have the ac we have the actual unit itself feels feels a decent weight yeah i mean obviously it's made out of you know, obviously it's made out of plastic um but yeah uh, a sort of built-in built-in sun hood let's get rid of that because i like obviously peeling those off uh looks like we have uh some sort of power button uh, or screen off here what looks like hopefully the camera's picking this up uh we have uh, a little panel here which i suspect will have a U usb socket in there as well as uh, a slot for an sd card and we have uh, the wiring harness so that's the main unit what else do we have inside the box we have a generic 
we open this up. Ram mount, uh, sorry, uh, the ram mount type uh, adapter. It feels fairly well made. I think it's an unbranded, like an un, un, unbranded ram mount type. We have some mounting hardware here, which I'll get to in a moment. We have one of one of the power leads, which will probably be the one that I use for doing this review, which is the USB one. Uh, so I'll probably power this off of the USB socket on the bike. And we also have this, which I think it's fair to say, yeah will be able to mount straight into the uh, the battery. Now, I could wire this into the BMW accessory socket, but for the purposes of this test, I don't really want to remove the BMW nav cradle, so I probably won't be using that. And we have a manual. So let me just get rid of the box out of the way. So. We have that, the CarPlay manual. Let's be honest, I'm I'm a guy and I work in IET, so I probably won't spend too much time reading this, but I will refer to it should I need to. And let's have a look at this. So, spanner, uh, a piece of rubber, which I assume will be to protect um, any metal bar that this gets mounted to. We have this uh, this mount here for the ball, which looks small enough that I might be able to mount it to the BMW nav bar on my R1300GS. Not sure yet. I think it might be a little bit small to mount to the handlebars. Um, obviously other RAM mounts are available as long as they have this what I think is a one inch uh, ball end uh, that sh you should be able to use that with any existing ram mount but we shall find out and then we have these various screws uh, sorry various various nuts and these two different length bars if if I can get them out which is proving slightly difficult. So I'm gonna assume that these will go through here. This will mount to the bar. Uh, and then obviously these, you know, nylock nuts will ov obviously go on. But we'll obviously cover that when I go through the installation of it. But that's everything that obviously comes in the box. Pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, what I think you would expect with any of these sort of units. Um, yeah. Okay, so what I've done is I've run a, run a USB extension so I can power this up and we're gonna power it up for the first time. See what happens, see how fast it is and what the screen looks like. Wow. Okay, that was pretty quick. That, I have to say that, you know, booted up much quicker than A, I was A expecting, uh, and B, much faster than the Carpurad unit um, I've been using. Uh, so, pretty familiar type of setup. All of these units have a fairly straightforward, you know, layout. Uh, they have an option for Apple CarPlay, an option for Android Auto, the option for accessing an SD card, um, the pairing options, and obviously the settings, as well as, you know, screen brightness and things like that. So let's have a look around and see what happens. So I, that obviously doesn't do anything. Please use your iPhone to connect. Fine. Okay, we don't have anything connected. Same for the Android Auto option. We can set the date and time. Now, I don't know whether or not this will pick up the date and time from my phone. Um, we'll find out. Uh, we also have the option for SD card, which there isn't one in there. 
If we had a phone paired, uh, I believe we can use this to dial straight from the unit. Hopefully this is coming out on the, the, the camera. It looks a little bit dull, but I have to say the screen is quite bright. Um, they, could have squeezed, they could have squeezed a bit more screen real estate into the unit, really. The, the, uh, the actual bezels are quite big. Um, so I, I, I feel like they could probably have made the screen a six inch, um, but you know, anyway, Bluetooth headset. Obviously we don't have one paired yet. Let's go into the setup. Touch calibration, I'm not going to mess with that. Logo setup, um, I'm assuming I can change the background. Um, I'll have a play around with that at some point. I'm sure the password is probably in the manual. Ah, zero, 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 zero. Um, I, so I, I can change that. Uh, so I can probably upload uh, a picture via the SD card, which I might do later on. Sound setup, uh, not going to mess with that too much right now, but it looks like we have uh, a typical graphic equaliser for the music playback element of it. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, display settings. So that's the same case. So the brightness is only at not even fifth not even fifth not even fifty percent let's whack that all the way up okay so that's at a hundred so that is a little bit washed out now so i'm gonna turn that bring the contrast up no hue let's have a just have a play around with these i have to say this is the first unit i've seen with you know saturation and hue and contrast control so i'm going to bring the brightness down a bit because i think that looks a little bit too washed out okay right that's why you shouldn't you know mess around with things too much bring that brightness back down yeah, these icons still look a bit washed out. It's probably because I've been messing around with... There we go, that's a bit more like it. So yeah, all in all, um, that really does boot up pretty fast. So, okay. Let's see what happens when we pair this. So... Bluetooth. Okay, hopefully this is, let's me turn the brightness up on this. That's better. So, searching. Let's see what happens. There we go, there is the unit there. And pairing request. Okay, we're going to accept that. Yes. And then we're going to hopefully get a CarPlay request. Yep, use this with CarPlay. Connected. And as we can see, it has actually changed the time. There we go, and we're into Apple CarPlay. So, I don't know why music is playing. There we go, let's get rid of that. So, right, we are in. Let's see how quick the unit is. Pretty snappy. Looks like we have an assistive touch uh, thing there. So we can change the volume and the brightness. Okay, that'll be good for nighttime testing. Um, let's have a look. My radar, yep, accept. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty snappy considering it's quite a small unit. Um, what else have we got? I'm not going to go into maps, obviously, because that will show where I live. Um, let's go into music. I'm not sure why it started playing Sophie Ellis Baxter. Not on my music, usual music. Um, yeah, all pretty quick and swift. Overall, incredibly quick and bright. So what I want to see now 
is how quick it is when it actually boots up and and re uh, if I can say say the word properly if when it reconnects uh, as if you were actually using it so let's see it was it was initially quick to fire up but let's see how quick it is to connect to Apple CarPlay okay let's see okay maybe I haven't put that in quite far enough Ah, there we go. Okay, and we're in. That was... Okay. <laughs> My phone really wants to keep playing, Sophie, keep playing Sophie Ellis Baxter. Anyway, that was incredibly quick, in fairness. Um, very quick i'm just going to bring it out of shot a minute just to uh, just to load up a route in let's say google maps uh, search and let's search for a place yeah that was pretty fast and re responsive yeah We'll do more testing on that once I actually install it on the bike. But so far, very snappy and quick. Like I say, easily on par with uh, the Carpuride that I normally use. So in terms of mounting it, what I think I'm going to do, I don't think it will fit to the handlebars. So what I think I'm going to do, rather than take all of this off, I think what I'm going to do is unscrew this, slide this as far over to the right as I can, and then I'm going to try and mount the ram mount there. So it sort of ends up about here, which will be fine just for, just for, for normal riding, as long as it doesn't interfere with the handlebars so that's that's how I'm going to try and install it and then I have a USB socket can't really see it right now but it's sort of down here uh, so that should be quite straightforward to wire in so let's let's give that a go so in terms of mounting this um, I was going to do uh, part of the video on how to mount it but that wouldn't really be fair unless I was mounting it somewhere that was effectively where it was where it was going to be permanently so i've already mounted it what i've done as a temporary measure is i've actually moved the ball mount uh, well i've I, i'm not sure if you can see it too well here but i've put the ball mount here onto the side of my sort of nav bar move this along as far as it will go i've just managed to squeeze this in without hitting the screen and it's being powered off of uh, a little Ultimate Add-ons uh, USB charger uh, that will ov ov obviously plug into the bike. So that's the mounting of it. Obviously, it's not ideal. If I was keeping this permanently, I would obviously remove this, get rid of the wiring, and then move this up, move this up here for a more neater uh, solution. Hello, uh, welcome back. So I have just been over to Chester to Halliwell Jones BMW um, to pick up a part for my bike that I've been waiting for since January. Um, not their fault, by by the way. Uh, so I didn't have time to film on on the way over here. So we're going to do a short ride to a place not far from here called JNS Accessories. Um, I'm not going to make you watch the in, the in, uh, the entire ride, obviously, uh, but I just thought we'd you know fire up the unit, plumb in a route. Obviously, CarPlay is exactly the same on any unit. Um, the unit is, is you know merely just a screen a screen mirroring um, you know 
device. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I haven't mounted it in the most ideal location. Um, so please take that into account. Um, removing this, as I said previously, would be a bit of a pain. So let's fire up the bike and wait for everything to connect. Hopefully this is coming out okay on the video. It's ah mobile phone one connected in my headset, which means it's linked to the Orex. And there we go. We have Waze. And again, it's playing music. So let me just mute that. So I used Waze the whole way over here. Absolutely perfect. No issues whatsoever. Um, what I'm going to do is bump the brightness up to 100 as it is quite a bright day in parts, uh, although it might rain soon. And I'm going to use the app that I tend to use when I do um, when I when I do tours, which is my route app, which is going to not behave on the one time that I need it to. I'm not going to edit this out. Um, this is this is an app this is an app issue, not an OREX issue. So let me just and have a look and see because my root app has been a little bit prob a little bit problematic. Ah, that's because I'm using the beta and I needed to accept it before I started using it. So let's force quit that and start again. There we go. Right. Like I say, that was a me problem, not not the unit. So let's actually plumb in that route now. After all that faffing around. And by the way, these Alpine Stars gloves, I don't believe that they're touch, you know, set that they're sort of, you know, enabled for touch screens. Um, but they work, you know, absolutely, absolutely fine. So let's go into the keyboard oh, and let's search for J and S. Search J and S Chester Road. I think that's the one. I think it is. It's still in kilometres because I changed it while I was away recently. But we'll ignore that. Root plumbed in. Absolutely fine. Let's go. Oh, uh, on the way over here, um, I was listening to music for probably a solid 40 minutes on it. Um, I did, did initially have some issues getting the headset, uh, the headset audio to actually play con consistently, which is a bit of a known issue on these units. Not not just O Rex uh, across across the board. Um, I have emailed them about it and they are aware of this so I suspect at some point there will probably be a software update to fix that um, or at least let you switch the audio so that it so that the OREX doesn't um, doesn't actually grab the audio hopefully this uh, this looks all right on camera from a, re a re responsiveness point of view, it's as as snappy as any other CarPlay that I've used, both in the car and also on my on my bike. Obviously, there is a little bit of sun glare there, which is probably partly due to the angle that I've got it at, um, which is my fault. Like I say, because I haven't mounted it there, but I can read it. I uh, I had my my in my internal my internal sun visor down most of the whole most of most of the way here and I could read it fine perfectly readable as readable as the copyright that I normally use um, music playback like, like I say absolutely fine I was incredibly incredibly surprised by it that is the one criticism I had with the copyright unit until they uh, updated the software so that you could actually switch that part off and just have your headset paired to your phone normally. 
but on this it has been absolutely fine um like i say i was very surprised you you know navigating around with gloves on there's a tiny little bit of lag but it's nothing nothing dramatic no worse than the lag on the carplay in my ford that i have um but yeah so let's go back into my route app very impressed with the unit as i was saying i would like to see a software update to allow you to um not have the audio pass through to the carplay unit uh, and just have it linked to your headset i would like to see a software update so that you can ha at the very least have a night and day mode for the brightness um it would also be good if it could remember the brightness and volume settings so that you didn't have to change them every time um that that would be very useful okay so final thoughts then um would i recommend the orex x5 um absolutely yes will it be staying on my bike currently no um mainly because i prefer a larger a larger screen which brings me on to things i would like to see you know orex improve or you know work on and i would be more than happy to help test any units uh, that they might um, that they might produce in the future, um, as mentioned in the ride video, there are some software tweaks that I would really like. Um, I would like to see some sort of adapter um, or plate that you could use to mount it to, for instance, my uh, you R thirteen hundred you know GS. Um, I think that would make it both removable um, in the the in the event of you know leaving uh, the bike unattended, uh, and I think it would open up to more people who maybe have multiple bikes and they wanted to move from one to the other. Um, and I would also like to see a slightly larger larger screen unit. However, having said that. Um, I have tried one of these, you know, slightly more unknown names, uh, CarPlay units, and it was absolutely awful. This, fast, responsive, the screen was incredibly bright, um, really impressed with it. If anyone is interested in one, there is a link down in the description, uh, and there is also a 15% off, you know, discount code that you, that you that you can use. Um, so yeah, thank you to Orex for this and uh, looking forward to maybe trying more out in the future.